I ordered these on a Friday. Here it is Monday. My wheel studs. From Michigan Truck Spring. I'm telling you, them people are so helpful there. Like many of your factory wheel studs will have a, a number on the back of it cast in. So if you have one, you know, like this one, that like this is a rear here, this is a front, but if you had a rear that you just needed some of the same ones, just give them that number, they'll cross it over for you. Now you can see the difference in the length of these two, which gives me what I needed to put aluminum wheels in the front. the multiple washers is so you have several different layers that can spin so you're not chewing up anything so when I take this apart they'll be you know fairly clean in between there you see there's no damage to the lug nut the washers or anything you just add another layer of oil in between them and do it again like I said they make a tool for this I don't have it um, one day I'll buy it it's really nice because it's hydraulic Tiger Tool makes one um, it threads on like a lug nut but it's got a hydraulic cylinder that goes on the back in here and it pulls it in so you're uh, taking less chance of hurting anything because what you really don't want to happen is this to start to spin as you're pulling in because if it spins it'll ruin the, the knurling inside and it'll egg out the cast iron or round out whatever. And then I'll, while I'm checking, I'll just leave the tension on it just so uh, the tension stays on it'll pull it through. But every one I will check to make sure that it is seated all the way around. It takes a little time, but I think it's worth the effort. All right, so they're all in. I'm just going to take a second to double check them. Now, every time I put new studs in one of these, once I get, uh, I'm counting the number of the ones I'm checking, by the way. <clears throat> once I get the wheels back on it and start driving it. I'll retorque the wheels every couple times that I drive it just to make sure that they've seated all the way and that they're all tight. <clears throat> yeah, we're good. Anyways, I'll finish checking these and uh We've already checked the brakes and the S-cams, you know, and uh, all the hardware, make sure it 
all looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to touch up this hub here. It's just real quick. I'm going to paint that and then we're going to put it back together. All right, guys, so the paint is good and dry, and it's been uh, curing for a couple weeks now. So we want to get this axle mounted up to the frame, and there's a cross, big, huge cross member in here. It's way overkill, but I've never been uh, disappointed with overkill, that's for sure. So I've got all my grade 8 bolts, all my grade 8 hardware. Uh, our supplier was able to get in some more of the SAE washers, which I definitely prefer that on these types of builds, you know, on frames. I prefer those washers. If you don't know the difference, uh, an SAE washer is a smaller outside diameter than a basic washer you might get at Tractor Supply. And it definitely suits this much better because it, the washer doesn't overhang the spring hanger mounts. It, it fits where it's supposed to, just like the factory uh, huck rivets would have done or huck bolts. So we want to get this thing in here. The temperature's changed. It's really cold now. Um, I muted this because I've got the air compressor running, the furnace is running, and the grate all is running, and it's loud. You can't hear anything anyways. So we get this kind of set in place. I've got it set on jacks here, um, one on each side, so that we can manipulate up and down to get everything lined up. It goes really good. Um, using that uh, tapered, like kind of like a center punch um, pry bar right there to get my holes lined up and get the cross member lined up and it's working out pretty well we didn't have to change any holes or you know ream them or anything like that everything fit well <clears throat> so the goal today in this video is to get the axle mounted get all the plumbing and the brakes all in place get the brake shoes s cams uh, there's there's a lot we're going to try and get by the end of the video i'd like to have it ready to put wheels on i'm not going to put the wheels on yet because we still have some other work but I'd like to have it to where it's able to have wheels on it. So if I need to roll it outside, I can do that because I've got some other things pressing and I may, I'm not sure, but I may want to pull this outside for just a little bit. I hate to because we got fresh paint, fresh bolts, and it'd be much easier if I could just leave it inside. But I got a pressing issue where we're going to help somebody out and I need to get this, this thing in and get work on it so we can get it back to them. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's I know it's a really really long one, but there's a lot of detail in here. So if you have if you're doing something similar or you're you're working on your own truck, hopefully maybe this will help you out. So I've cleaned up the shock mounts, the bump stops, and the torque arm, and another part for the torque arm mount. And I've, I've used the needle scaler flap disc and got them cleaned up as best as I could. Um, I need to get them all painted up, so I'm doing this ahead of time so they can get primed. Two coats of primer, at least two coats of paint, and let them cure for a while while I'm working on all the other stuff. Because... It's a long process. Every project's the same way. When you get down to this, this is when it really takes time and the details. If ever there was a time to have a small sandblasting cabinet, it would be now. It would have made this much faster, much easier. While we're waiting for the paint to dry, we're going to work on the pivot pin bushings. This is where the brake shoots mount, and there's a bushing in here, and this bushing um, is in here so that you wear the bushing out and not the spider. This is a spider. So a lot of times guys don't change these or don't, don't do anything with the, the actual pivot itself. The pivot is meant to turn a little bit with the brake shoe, and um, they'll leave this in here. They'll get stuck, and they're tough to get out. Picked up this tool for my air hammer 
because sometimes they're a little tough to get out. It's actually machined just on the edge so it sits right in the bushing and you can use it to drive them out and install them. This is just slightly smaller than the bushing itself. I did one to see if it was going to work because this is made by Lyle and the last Lyle tool I got didn't work. So the spider is cast steel, so you get a little bit of rust on the bushing, and a lot of times what will happen is the bushing is split here, so it can't, it'll can't. it compress a little bit, and then it'll make it to where the roller won't move. So um, I'm going to get a file and lightly clean this up just to get any rust out of there, and then we'll push the new ones back in. All I'm doing is feeling for the rust and just lightly going over flat. Just till it knocks the rust off. I'm not looking to remove cast iron. I just want to get the rust out of there. A lot of times where the where the split is in the bushing, it'll rust right down in here, which I don't know if you can see that, there's a rust line right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm much happier than that. My brake shoes came with the springs that actually hold the shoes on, which is this rust colored springs and the blue colored spring. This is the pivot pin here and the bushing. It's inside the bushing. Same thing as here, new rollers for the application side and new pins that go in the shoe to hold the springs. Now I'm gonna use this tool to put it back in, but I'm not gonna use the air hammer. And it has a stop here so you don't go too far. And I'm going to use my old brass hammer to put them in, not the air hammer. Uh, the tool's set up to where you can use the air hammer on either end, but I'm just going to tap it with the brass hammer, I think. Okay, she's bottomed out. I believe it is. like it. Make sure there's nothing there. A lot of guys drive them in with just a hammer or whatever, but I like the fact it's machined to fit the bushing so you're not mushing out the bushing. This means the roller can go in and out of it very easy. We didn't, we didn't distort or crush the end of the bushing. Alright, next we're going to work on the S-cam bushings because I bought new S-cams to go in here. The S-cam bushings in this one are actually like a plastic material. Uh, I don't like to hit these with a hammer, especially in cool weather, for fear of cracking or breaking one. So I'm going to use just a basic, you know, squeeze method to install them. That whole kit will do one axle. It comes with the seals, the bushings, washers, snap rings, and the grease deflector shield, all for like nine bucks. So well worth the money you know pretty cheap so first thing we got to do is clean the bore out and get it ready to go you'll see there's crud down in here we got to get cleaned up so that the seal will sit in here um, and then clean this bore out real good I've started cleaning it before we painted but I thought I would just wait and what I'm gonna do is just push a couple rags through here and pull all the grease out real quick and then we'll get on this 
ceiling surface, get it cleaned up. All right, now you can see it. There's a step bore right here. You see how this is, where the seal goes is a larger diameter than where the bushing goes. And you can also see in here, this is a stop that's machined into this. So the bushing goes into there and stops. And the same way on the, on the other side. So now we're gonna clean it all up like this, get ready to do both of them. So we're gonna run a piece of all thread through here. Set this in here. Get it started as straight as possible. And we'll take the other bushing on the inside. Get started. And I'm using these washers on there because this washer is just slightly larger than the bushing and it uh, see that it's just slightly larger and it fits perfectly inside that bore so it'll stop it right where it needs to go So you can see that's set perfect in here, flush right where it needs to go. That washer just makes it to where it won't go any farther. It's hitting that machined lip right in there. So that's done. Next is the seals. The seals go in two different ways. All right, so traditionally this outside seal you know, it's going to go in just like, just like it would with any other seal. What's happening is this seal, the garter spring on the back, is what's holding the grease in here. But when you get to the other side, it's not going to look like this when you look at it. When you look at the other side, you're going to see this side. So the purpose there is when you're putting grease into the S-CAM tube, if you put too much grease in, we want it to go past the inside. So if you turn this this way, then it allows the grease to go that way instead of giving into your brake drum and putting grease all over the brakes. So this is a new S-CAM. The easiest way to make sure you got the right one is just, if you're working on the right, grab it in your right hand and your thumb should go down in this valley. Then you know you got the right one. So this is kind of a dust shield and it's a wear plate so the s cam is going to go up against it so i got that seal in next is the thick spacer washer that goes between the s cam housing and the uh, slack adjuster now it gives me two for this side so if i can use them i'm going to it gives me a total of four so i don't want a whole lot of play in and out so I'm going to use as many spacers as I can to snug it up, and uh, next we'll put the S-CAM on. Now we're reusing our, our slack adjusters because they were in good shape. All right, so I used two shims on the inside and two on the outside. I'm trying to take up as much slack as I can get on this, and we got it. It's, it's snug now, and you can see it's, it moves real easy. There's my new brake shoes. Um, these are pins that got to be driven in.
All right, so I backed it off so they're sitting in here, right in the cradle where they should be. And now they're sitting on the, the pivot pins good. I didn't mention, but I did put never seize on uh, the pivot pins themselves. So now all we have to do is just put our retainers, our uh, return springs on retainer. So I got the brake chamber on and we're about as far as we can go until I get the ABS sensor. But what I wanted to do was, this is a caging bolt and it's meant to go in the back of this because this is a spring. This brake chamber has two different chambers. One is for applying the brakes and another is for parking, which is a spring inside here. So when, when you park this truck, you remove air pressure from this chamber from here to here. So when you put air in this chamber, it collapses a spring. When you remove it, it lets the spring move the slack adjuster. So this is in the park position. You can see with the absence of air, it moves this roller out of here. And when it comes up on this, this roll, this high, high part of the S-cam, it spreads the brake shoes apart, which will put them pressing against the brake drums if the brake drum is on. So, if you ever have to tow these from the front, if there's no air, you have to mechanically overcome the spring that's in here. So you take this hole out, this plug out of this hole right in here, and this caging bolt, when you buy new chambers, they're on them, and they have a T-slot on them on the end of them and that T is meant to go into the end of the brake chamber you can find the slot right in here you feel it and there it is turn 90 degree turn it 90 degrees and then you put the washer on put the nut on and as you tighten this that bolt compresses that spring when it compresses the spring it moves the it moves the slack adjuster in here which in turn moves the s cam which will rock this back to where these rollers are down in this part right in here so it moves the brake shoes closer so that way the brakes are released so these are, like I said, these work with the absence of air. That's how the, the spring brake works. That's why it's called a spring brake. So I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to put them in the glove box of the truck. Because every time I go to get these out of a brake chamber to use them, I try and get them out of here. I'm tapping on them, and it either cracks the brake chamber, or you do get it out, and the threads are so boogered up, you have to fight it, and it doesn't work. Uh, so I just put them inside the glove box of the truck that way. They're always there because this is my truck not somebody else's and then always be sure to Do your tow truck driver a favor and make sure these are always covered because when these get filled full of crud and rust You can't get This T to engage so you can't release the brakes So all right, we'll get the other one out. We'll stick it in the glove box all right, so I've compared this one to the one that was in the axle, and they appear to be the same diameter, so it looks like it may work. So there's always a difference between theory and reality. In theory, this should be very, very quick. In reality, it doesn't fit through any of them holes. So, I guess 
if I want to use it, I'm either I'm probably just gonna have to take this connector apart and pull the pins out. So I brought it to the bench vise and I cut the heat shrink from around the connector. This is a Deutz connector connector. It's not real difficult to work with. There is a keeper, a lock. That green lock right there has to come out before you can release the keepers. Now I use, you can buy special tools, but you know, I'm pretty cheap. So this is just a car antenna that I have obviously ground down extremely sharp. And the reason I do that is because these things are flexible. They'll, they got a little give to them, but they don't bend. They stay straight and look how tiny point that is and it'll stay straight. So what you have to do is get down in here. This is going to be so hard to do because if I get the camera where you guys can see it, then I can't. Alright, you get down in here and grab that lock and pull it out of there. It's usually much harder than that just so we're all on the same page. Basically, you grab a hold of that lock, get it up out of there, and then down here on the pins, let's see if I can get it. You can see right here is a little lever. There's two locks in there, one for each pin. Let's see if that light helps at all. Yeah, it does help. Okay, so you can see there's one lock. And watch how it comes over like that. That allows the flange of this. To drop past okay that one started and then that one just pull it over and it's the same way it's easy if you got two hands you can hold that lock open and then push down the pin all right so now we are unlocked and I just take the end of the car antenna just push them down evenly. Okay. There they are. Now you can see they're recessed. Now before you pull it out completely, you're going to want to reference which side is which on, on any connector. This one's not such a big deal because of what this sensor actually does, but it's always good good to reference. There you are. Now she's out. So now we can take this sensor, put it in into the axle, feed these through, and then we will pin it back in here. All right, so I put two layers of heat shrink on here, and I put some loom on the cable as well because it's going to come over here, and the potential or possibility it could rub on the frame gets pretty high right there. So those are handled. The next thing I'd like to do is to get the hubs put on. So I need to get these spindles uncovered, get them all cleaned up and get ready to put the hubs on and the new bearings and all that. First thing I'm going to do is a little grease where that bearing is going to ride. I've already taken emery cloth and cleaned up this seal surface. Now, the seal I'm using is a replacement for what was already in this. Now, they do make one, a Stemco seal that has a metal sleeve that goes on the spindle, and then the seal would ride on that. I preferred that, but uh, when I ordered the parts, this is what we got. So, I put them in. Because I already paid for them, I already had them, but I gotta tell you, if I had a chance to do it again, I would go with the Stemco's now. SK makes one, and National makes one that does the same thing, but it's less money, and you don't have to have a special tool to install it. It doesn't have the metal ring, it has uh, the rubber, the neoprene or rubber, whatever that is, and the gasket sits on the hub, and it stays stationary and then the seal basically spins on the seal itself. It's like a two-part seal. 
which those are pretty helpful too, especially if you have pitting or grooves wore in your spindle where your seal rides. I like to put just a thin layer on here because I think it uh, makes a seal slide on a little easier. This axle originally came with these spring lock nuts. It has a keyway here, locks in the spindle so the outside can't move and then you take a, the socket and you press it, pull these two tabs out and you tighten it where you want it and then you let it go and these lock into place. Well, several times I've gone to take these, these types apart and I found these pieces, the lock part, as you can see it's moving really easy in here. It should be spring loaded like that. I've seen them laying in the bottom of the hub all chewed up so uh, doesn't mean they're bad just means that you know this isn't my favorite I prefer this it's just a standard been do, using it forever nut with a locking pin and then you have a lock ring bend over washer and an outside jam nut so let's get this stuff put together here so if you wondered what that part number is. This is for a Meritor axle. A little bit of light oil on the shaft just so the bearings slide in well with no issues. Make sure the inside of that bearing is clean. There's no dirt, grit, rocks, metal shavings, whatever. Now normally, if you were going to put this together and immediately go drive it, I would suggest, you know, soaking this in oil. But uh, this truck's going to sit so long with what we have planned that we'll get good oil saturation. Okay. Now it's important when you do this, this is the, the nut that goes on first. It has a locking pin. You have to be careful doing this. This is very sharp sometimes. Most of the time they got a chamfered edge on them, but sometimes they're pretty sharp. Like I've sliced the tops of my knuckles on this many a times. All right, All right let's go get, uh, get the right socket and we'll get my uh, torque wrench and we'll go over the sequence here. So now we need to grab our socket. Now, traditionally, I would use this. This is the OTC 4 inch axle nut socket stamp steel you know edges are kind of rounded it's been used quite a bit and it's pretty sloppy now it works it does what we need to do the torque that we're going to isn't ridiculous the biggest problem I have on these is putting it on there and they kind of slide around and this isn't a very a very wide or thick nut to begin with so sliding off there is pretty easy and like I was telling you I've sliced my fingers on them hubs before so a while ago I, I decided it was time I went and bought the Tiger Tool 18200 this is the uh, six point axle, axle nut socket set it's got two inch two and three quarters three and an eighth three and a quarter and the one we need four inch and you can see what a difference in how it fits I mean just incredible and this is more like your traditional impact socket you know it's it's meant to take the torque you could use it for other things besides axle nut socket axle nuts this one I certainly wouldn't recommend that axle nuts is all because this only has to go to a nominal torque amount but you know this one's definitely capable of going far beyond what we need to all right so let's get this let's go through the procedure Okay, so the procedure I use is I run, I run the, the first nut in until it's snug. Then I'll spin the bearing a bunch of times. And I like to go both ways. Then I'll snug it again. You saw I got a little bit more play there. Maybe do this a couple times. 
This isn't out of a manual, this is just this the way I like to do it. And so that's it. So now I'm going to torque this to 200 foot pounds. Okay, 200 foot pounds. I'm going to turn it. Find my writing right here. Now I'm going to back it off. One full revolution. Now I'm going to torque it. 50 pounds. Okay, I got the magnetic base on the spindle, and then it's coming up to the machine surface of the hub. Now, one to five thousandths of movement this way in and out is acceptable. That's six thousandths. That's about four thousandths. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now there'll be a little bit of adjustment in order to make this go in, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll move forward from here. Now that's just the preliminary. We'll have to do it again. Once we torque this down to make sure everything's correct before we do our bend over on the lock tabs. All right, so this this washer right here, this is the lock ring. It's keyed and it goes into a splice in the bottom of the spindle on this one. And um, if you can see that, the keyway is offset on one of the holes. So if you're not close enough this way, you can turn it around this way and it'll give you offset to help you out, get you a little bit closer adjustment. Okay, so I either have to go tighter by just a skosh or looser. And since we had clearance we did, I just went a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter. Next is this bend over lock washer. So this is the same thing, it's keyed here. And then we're going to put this in. And lastly, we're going to put the jam nut. Now the jam nut on this, I'm going to torque to 200 foot pounds. I spin that because my torque should not change. I shouldn't have to torque it any different if I roll the bearing around. Okay, now that that's torqued in place, we're going to recheck our end plate. Now you could probably just hold off and do this at the end, you know, if you wanted to. You wouldn't have to do it twice. I just prefer to do it like this so I can get it set as close as I can to begin with. Zeroed out. Give 
Let's sit down. Yeah, I'm good with that. Now that we're happy with our torque, I'm going to take this old broken pry bar, come in here, and get right behind. Might be easier to see right here. Right behind this tab, and I'm going to bring it over. And then what I'll do is, you don't need to go crazy with these. I like to get one tab on every side of the nut. I really like when we get one side corner. Like this one. I'm not sure how many they actually want you to bend over, but I don't think this is going to hurt anything. All right, next we're going to clean up the ceiling surface. I use axle gaskets most of the time. On a machine surface like this, I put them on dry. If it's something that is machined or cast and has uh, pits or deformities in it, I'll use a thin layer of RTV. So this is the axle for that side. And it has been laying around the shop for quite some time. So I'm going to hose it down with brake parts cleaner and uh, get all the dirt off of it. I don't want any metal filings or rust or dirt or rocks or who knows what. Getting into that axle and undoing a lot of the work we've already done. Now before we got this axle, this, this differential, these axles had been out before and uh, the person that was pulling them one of the times or many of the times was not real gentle on the edges. They smacked it right here pretty hard in a few places. So I took a flap disc and I brought it down, careful not to get into the machine surface where the gasket would ride. But I don't want any spot like where it actually touches because you can see the hub kind of goes in and out right in here. So I got to make sure there's no high spots anywhere this will hit otherwise my seal will not, my gasket won't seal and then we'll have a big a big leak and mess on our hands. The other thing is, these axles are different left to right because the pinion is offset to one side. So one side is typically shorter by just, you know, just a few inches than the other. So if you go to slide it in and one side, uh, you know, sticks out so far, you'll know why. Push down on this just a little bit, and they'll get it to engage. So you can see that's kind of a cone shape, and so is the insert in the axle where these cones go. So the idea is that these are going to go in here, and they're going to if you watch, the axle will move, it will center. It's going to center the axle so it runs true. Now since these cones do center this, it's important that you go across when you're doing this so that the axle does get centered. It has to go up to get into the bearing. So you just take a little pry bar, get down here. This will push down, it'll lift the other end. You'll feel it.
when I do this, I'm just going to start the bottom one, go directly across. Just like doing a, a wheel, it's going to have to center this. If you run one in too far and run the other one too far, you can't get it centered just right. When I pulled these hoses off that parts truck, I wasn't a fan of these, these connections. My personal preference was to just go ahead and replace them uh, for what these cost. It's money well spent, cheap insurance, so now we're going to get them in the truck. So coming out of the ABS valve there with our service brake hose. So it's very important to pay attention to, I know I'm going to get that on the wrong side. I guarantee it's going to happen before this is over with. It's very important to make sure you get your hose for your service brakes going to the right chamber, the right port on the chamber. They're marked. This one you can see says service here. This one's part. Now, on the other side, they'll be reversed because we've rolled the parking brake chamber over. So we're going to do this. Now, the, the brake hose that, that we've got here, um, we have a, a fixed fitting on one end and a swivel. Now if we didn't have a swivel on either end of this we couldn't get them, get them tight. And then on the swivel end air hoses seem to use this nice little uh, special adapter that takes it from a swivel back to a pipe thread. Now what we're going to do is to make this easier for replacement later is we're going to put both of our swivels down on the brake chamber. So when the guy's laying down there in the muck and has to change a brake chamber, he doesn't have to try and reach up in this area to get to the swivel. He can simply get the swivel down here and he's only messing with one set of fittings because if you're trying to get the fittings out of this brake chamber and it cracks, it's not a big deal. But if you, if you have to change a hose or even the brake chamber or whatever, but if you're messing with this hose, you come up to the ABS valve or the parking brake valve here, and you break it, well now you got a whole lot more grief that you didn't didn't need. So we're going to put all the swivels down here. So we'll put this one in first. Alright, so we're gonna hold that fitting, tighten this one up. This is one of them places where um, when you're messing with fittings like this where a angle head wrench set would be very helpful. I've been looking at them, I just haven't bought one yet. I'm looking at two different brands. Um, I just haven't made a decision yet. Now I ordered the, I bought these hoes, I, I measured these and I shortened them up. I figured the travel of the axle, and uh, I figured how far we were going to travel, and how far the axle can move, and uh, I went from there because I really didn't want a bunch of hose interfering and getting caught. <clears throat> okay, I, I want to make sure it's not in a twist. I don't know if that shows up, but it's in a little bit of a twist there. I don't care for that. So I'll pull this back just ever so slightly. So when I tighten it, it tightens right where I want and keeps the twist out of it. Yeah, 
the camera. Shut off. Okay, right before I go to sense it down, I'm gonna turn it back about a quarter of a turn. That way when it tightens up. It's not on the bind. Okay. So that's those two in. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat it on the other side. I'm gonna put the brake drums on. First thing we're gonna do is wipe them down, get all the anti-rust chemical off of it that the factory put on. Because I don't want that contaminating my brakes, my brand new brake shoes. Before I put this on, you want to make sure your your brakes your brakes are backed off. You you want your rollers to be in the valley, the narrowest part of the S can, so it'll go on easily. I'm ready to adjust the brakes, but I don't have any air in the tanks, and I don't want to start the truck up. So we are going to take the drain valve out of the main tank. I'm going to put a shop fitting in here. And we're going to charge the system with shop air. So the air compressor pumps air into the dryer, out of the dryer. This one may, even though we have a dryer, still may be some condensation gets in the first tank. And then there's a check valve and it feeds the other tank. So now we are filling up both tanks on the, on the system. Now, one of them tanks, which is that one over there, is for the brakes. So we got that one filled. So now we should be able to put air to the cylinder and it should back off the parking brakes so that we can adjust the service brakes. So we don't have someone to push on the brake pedal for us while we're measuring. So what we're going to do is go to the relay valve here. Remember we have air pressure charged here sitting waiting to go to each ABS valve and then get delivered to the brake chamber. So we're going to bypass the pedal and basically put in this adapter along with a pressure regulator so that we can put shop air into the brakes and actuate the brakes. So you can see in here the brake shoe is not touching the brake drum because the parking brake has been released and we haven't adjusted them. So what we'll do is come in here to the slack adjuster and there's an adjustment bolt right here on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten them up until they touch. You know you're going the right way because it sounds just like a regular ratchet. Okay. Once it's, it's touching and it's tight, we're going to come back to the ratchet, flip it the other direction, and we're going to back it off one quarter of a turn. I'm not going to be able to get a full quarter turn. I'm going to hit the bracket, so I'll do... You're going to lose a little bit right there before the ratchet starts to engage. So I got about an eighth, a little bit more. So we're looking to back it off a quarter of a turn and then we should be able to turn the brakes, the brake drums, without it dragging. Alright, we're still at two and a quarter. Let's see where we're at now. We're about three and five eighths. That's okay because an inch an inch and a half is what we're after, so I could back off just a skosh. Yeah, because those are dragging just a little bit. 
So we're going to take this off a click or two. Alright, so our measurement stays the same when the parking brake is released. We're constantly at two, at two, in, two and one quarter inches. Now we apply the brakes. We're at three, right at three and three quarters. So I'm happy with that. We're going to move forward from there to the other side, and that'll be good. Well, I think this is a good place to stop here because all the brakes are finished up now. The only thing I need to do before I leave today is I want to grease that S-cam tube and the slack adjuster on both sides so I know they're handled. I have a five-gallon bucket of synthetic gear oil coming, so we're going to flush the rear end out and fill it back up. And next video, we will be working with plumbing up the airbags. We are going to have to run air supply to it. Uh, we're putting a dump valve in the cab. So we have to run all that plumbing and, you know, we got a bunch of wiring to go. We've got uh, drive shaft needs to be built and installed. Um, there may be a hiccup on that yet. I've made a decision on the rear of this, so we have to do what we need to do to get ready for that. And I got a couple other surprises for the back of this. You, I know a lot of guys are going to think they know what I got cooking in my mind, but I bet you they're wrong. So we're going to get that going, and as soon as we finish up on the rear of this, we're going to focus our attention to the front. we got a lot going on up here. We're, we haven't talked much about the front of the truck, but we will soon. Now, in between all that, we're, we got our drive shaft, as many of you know. we got the drive shaft finished up, so now we can start moving on the dynaho again. And I've got uh, another project that I have been videoing that we're working on. I think a lot of guys are going to find interesting. Um, so anyways, we got a lot more to come. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, one more thing I'm going to start doing. If you guys have a project that you're working on and you would like me to show it in one of my videos, email me some pictures, description of what you got going on, and I'm going to start adding them to the tail end of my videos if we have some. If there's anybody interested, send it to me. Email will be in the description box. Also in the description box, I'm going to start putting links to, uh, some of my favorite channels or some channels that I've come across that are really good channels and maybe they're just now starting to get going and they're not getting the exposure that they really deserve. So I'm going to start putting them in. So if you have a channel that you think, you know, kind of relates to what I do and you think I would like it, leave in the comments, man. I'd like to check it out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to leave you on that. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments down below, and we will catch you on the next one. Magnetic base drill. Magnetic base drill. Good grief. <laughs>